Come here. Welcome to the famous Foxes Aftermath show, live every Sunday on Leicester Fan TV. Come on, you foxes. <laughs> Good morning, Foxes. How the devil are you? How's your weekend been so far? That's two wins at home out of two. Six points out of six. What a time it is to be a Leicester supporter. Well, you know what day it is. It's Sunday. It's 10 a.m. So it's time for the famous Foxes Aftermath show run by us fans, for you fans out there. And you know what? Your opinion matters. Get them comments in now. Let's get going. It's kickoff time. Come on, you fans. The Leicester City machine is on the march again. Leicester Fan TV presents a variety of content like fan discussions, match analysis, and engaging with Leicester fans worldwide. We want your views live. Thanks to our sponsors Everox, Follow Blinds, Pocker Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Distillers Direct, Hologram, Take Me, Nubian Co., and the Fox's Arms and Rainbows. We are live in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Morning all. That comment, morning Kev. Yeah, we're not open till tomorrow. So you're a little bit early. You're a day early, but we'll see you tomorrow, pal. Um, how is everyone? How is everyone doing after such a fantastic result yesterday? Uh, we needed them three points with everyone losing. But the thing was, Ipswich losing, Leeds losing, with five, ten minutes to go, who could see us doing the most Leicester thing ever and only getting a point? That's what I was thinking. I could think, we're going to blow this. We're going to blow this. We need to score. We need to score. That second half for me was probably one of the best second halves I've seen in a long time. Um, some people might disagree with me that. I know one person is definitely going to disagree with me on that. But I thought that second half was fantastic. I know we didn't score until the 87th minute. I know Mabidivi didn't do anything until that goal. But you still needed someone to be at the back post. And he was the man to put the ball in the back of the net. And on that point, we will bring young Reedy in. Morning, Reedy. How are you, pal? I'm good. How are you? You sound a bit downhearted. You meant to be up. The joys fully the joys of spring. We won three. We won two one. We got three points. Last minute winner. Who doesn't love a last minute winner? Well, not last minute winner. Last minute ish winner. Who doesn't love that? Oh, it was brilliant. It was right at the end, mate. Just I just wish we could have sorted out a bit earlier because, like, like you even said, I was thinking it was going to be a draw at the end of the game. To be honest, so. Um, you were there. Terry's just said morning, Terry. I was speaking to your uh, your brother last night, Chris. Um, KP was back. To its old self yesterday. Yes, it sounded like on the TV, it sounded like it was back up to its old self, but we need it to be like that every time, not just on the one off games. I think when like I say I think it always starts from how they go how it goes on the pitch. And I think at times yesterday there was a few good tackles in there, there was a few good attack runs on on the in the game and it got obviously got uh, the fans up and going for it so i'm glad we we could get it and just made it even better when we did score the uh the late minute winner andy meadows oh do one man please well i'm I sorry think... no not even when vardy came on he did absolutely nothing i'm sorry but they don't yeah, they've not I been getting they've, they've not been getting the service they've not been getting any that. service we don't play I've with a striker stuck, i've stuck up with him stuck up with him i've stuck with him and I've agreed with some of your comments, but yesterday's game wasn't his best game. No, it wasn't. But Vardy was, hadn't didn't have a good game no, when he came Vardy, on either. You know, the, the truth there, Vardy wasn't. We don't. Yesterday in the game saying, against I Norwich. Great, I would say he was pants, but he wasn't. Both, both games against Norwich and Birmingham. We, we barely played with a striker. They're always coming back into the midfield to try and hold the ball up and give it yeah. to someone else. We never really used that that striker position. Obviously, when Vardy was in a few weeks back, he was scoring quite a lot of goals because that's when we weren't really scoring many goals and he was the one scoring all of them. But now yeah. we're, con we're get getting goal scorers that aren't just a striker. We're barely using that striker position. So for me, f from what I saw, Daka got, got the assist for 
the uh, uh, Jews Bureau's goal. And that, for me, yeah. that's all you need to do. Well, yeah. Great. I wouldn't say Daka was pants. I'd say it was more like briefs than anything, to be honest, with a brief appearance for an hour. Uh, um, I won't, everyone keeps saying everyone's piling into Daka. I, I don't know why we seem to need... A, he won't get a game for Asdy Nomads. Kev, I think he might get a game for Asdy Nomads, to be honest. But we'll have this chat tomorrow, pal. Um, was all over Norwich. Brilliant second half subs and up the up the intensity. Yes, we did. I've got I've got three people waiting. I'm going to bring them all on at once. Jono, morning, Jono. Locks is sneaked in, and young Tom's joined it. Well, not young Tom. Oldish Tom has joined us. <laughs> I'll take young. <laughs> Tom, uh, you were there yesterday. What were your the atmosphere and the game itself? Oh, the, the atmosphere itself was the best it's been for a long time down there. I truly felt there was a lot of, maybe, maybe the uh, the old financial thing, maybe some other bits of piece, but I truly felt that the fans were at one going into that game. There was a lot of noise around us all game. Obviously, the Vishai chance on the 60th minute, fair play to everyone joining in. Uh, it was noisy. The game itself, well, it's typical Leicester, isn't it? Like, you get yourself, you get a slice of luck with the goal for GB Hall with Daka being in offside position in the build-up. Take it. Ooh, wasn't quite that offside. He's still offside though, Jamie. Row it's right, you know, he's he is in an offside position and comes back on side, you know. You take that slice of luck because we haven't had that recently, those little bit of luck. So you take that. You then oh, just before our time you get the game's easy. We're we're absolutely dominating the game. Birmingham no chances really in the first half for me. And then just playing out from the back, but I can't fault Mads because for his, he kept him most games this season when, you know, teams have chances. It's a bad, just one bad kick. Second half, what I can say, it was all Leicester, weren't it, really? I mean, yeah. it was all Leicester. And for me, the goal comes from the substitute, but also comes from a big, powerful centre-half deciding to run through the heart of the midfield of Birmingham City. Best, best of God being prime Franz Beckenbauer, strolling through the midfield, the and the midfield. Gets the ball wide and then causes more havoc because he doesn't stop the run. And if you look at the goal, I've watched it four, five, six times now. Vestergaard runs into the box, causes havoc with the Birmingham defence and the centre-half and the right-back both go to Vestergaard to try and push him. One pushes him out of the way and then they suddenly turn around and realise Mavadidi's behind them. Vestergaard doesn't make that run. Mavadidi doesn't score that goal for me. So, yeah, a lot yeah. of credit to Vestergaard for getting in there. And causing havoc at the end, and you know, without his run, that goal doesn't come, and we, we have to take a point from the game. Oh, no, Locks, you did the show afterwards. What was the view of the fans in the comments? And that were they happy with the result? Were happy with the performance? Um, yeah, yeah, people were happy, of course, they were. Yeah, um, I think there's still some people, including myself, who are obviously just I think it's more anxious because I think a lot of the time we don't know what Leicester's going to turn up. Um, I yeah. think. We score the goal yesterday and we we kind of just, I don't know, we just take a foot off the gas and it's just really irritating because like... The first goal you mean locks. Yeah, when we score, yeah. like, because you, you, mate, you see every other team that play against us, when they score against us, they go for a second. They go for a second. Even like Norwich did it on Monday, mate. They nearly scored again afterwards. Um because that's when a team's at the most fragile when they've just conceded, and then but we seem to take off off the gas. So I really find that just frustrating to watch. Um, because especially when you look at how we came out second half, like you know how good we are. We are very very good. We're a very good team when we want to be. You know we could have. I, I know it's impossible, by the way. I know it's impossible to play that tempo all game. It's impossible. But if you play that tempo more often and with that intent more often, like you. you you know, you will steamroll some teams. So it's just a bit frustrating when we don't. Um, but I know why Enzo doesn't have us that way. It's because I think Enzo likes control on the game, right? He doesn't like kind of chaos, I don't think, Enzo Matthews. You know, unless it's unless it's needed, unless you need, you know, a goal like we did yesterday, um, he likes to just have control of the game, have it you know, going nice and patiently. So, um, but no, overall, the fans are happy. Obviously, I'm happy. And, um, you know... I think with the bad form we were on, and we, we all said it, it's at the wrong time, because it was, it was at the wrong time of the season for that bad form to start. But now this is the perfect time to, to you know, win every game, and win six games on the, on the bounce. And, it is, eh? Which, 
Yeah, it, well, Ipswich leads, mate. I mean, it's the wrong time for them to lose a game for them. It's the not wrong time for them, and they lost their games. Um, yeah. And, you know, if we win every game now, we win the league, you know, and we equal the points record. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, equal the points record. Yeah, well, come yeah, on yeah. Uh, Jono, he made three subs, <laughs> I think, at the right time. I'm not sure why he brought Connor Cody on with about two seconds. At the ago. right time? I wouldn't say yeah. right time. Well, I think he did. I think he made him at the right time. The sub, he changed. Uh, it was just a tactical thing, Jono, for uh, JJ to come on for Doyle because Jay, uh, Doyle was getting the run around by that mush. I can't pronounce his name. You know what I'm like with names, with their winger. And then he brought Dennis Pratt on Eunice on uh, with about 10 minutes to go. I personally think it might have been just a, another five minutes before for Pratt and Eunice, but I think he made the subs at the right time, Jono. We've all been criticising him because recently he's been making subs 10 minutes too late. Playing teams make their subs, they do the damage and then we make ours. It's too late. So it's good to see him actually make subs when it's necessary for once. Um, maybe he's adapting what he's doing, but um, he's now making subs when it's necessary, which is a good thing. I don't think he is, Jamie. I think he made the subs at the same time as he normally does, doesn't he? The Vardy one was earlier, but the others were about the same time as normal. Of course, you brought Vardy on, didn't you? Yeah, you brought Vardy on earlier, but he doesn't normally... Vardy was early, yeah, yeah but, but the was... others were a similar time. But I think it, the, the game was changing with them 10 minutes to go. We needed an impetus, and I think I think Tom will know he's more of a tactical... He's got more tactical now than most of us. Uh, <laughs> making them subs with 10 minutes to go sort of changes the game, and for once, the subs actually did change the games. I mean, with that run by Vestergaard... He found, forget about him going into the box and taking players out, but he found Pratt. Pratt did his turn, gave it to Eunice, and Eunice put the ball in. As much as I love Fatua, he was overdoing that underlapping run ball, wasn't he, yesterday, Tom? Yeah, he was, but I also feel probably that the subs could have happened maybe 10 minutes before. I think with 20 minutes to go, the subs should have been made. I think, and Diddy, about 65, 70 minutes, was flat out on his feet. Yeah. And the balls that were, were, he would normally run on to from Fatua... He wasn't getting anywhere near because he just hadn't gotten the energy to get into the box. And at that point, the fans were getting frustrated. We kept mm. trying that overlapping ball uh, and we were getting nowhere near it. Maybe the ball were too heavy, but I still think 10 minutes before and the, the substitution probably should have been made because I think you could tell that Fatou had lost his mojo at that point because things weren't happening right. And Diddy was completely knackered and he wasn't getting anywhere near what he should have been. But look... The subs did change the game. I thought Pratt and, and uh, Eunice both had some really good touches in around the penalty area. Uh, I think Enzo said something quite interesting about his mentors saying, when teams attack you, you press high, you win the ball, you attack quickly. When you sit deep, you have to be patient, and you have to be slow and steady with the ball. It's quite interesting to say that because, you know, the fans get frustrated with this slow play when teams are sitting deep. But in some ways, you understand now what he's saying. You've got to try and pull people out of position. At the end, that's what us playing slow did because Vestergaard quicked it up. But you look when he goes to Pratt, he slows it down, he takes his time, he then takes his time, ball to Eunice, he takes his time to make sure that ball's pinpoint. For me, that really made the difference, those two subs, because I don't think you would I think at that point, if that ball goes to Fatui and then Undidi, they're looking for that overlap up and run again. And this time they didn't. Pratt stayed outside the area, what meant there was no one in that corner. And then Eunice has the freedom to cross the ball to the back post. Completely changed the game in my those two subs. And they needed to because at that point, Berman was starting to get a foot in the game. Had a couple more attacks because I felt like they had a bit more energy on the park at that point. Um, Reedy, like you were there, it's nice to see Wilf and Ricky making a huge difference, isn't it? They've, they've seemed to be, I don't know, the last time they played was, I think, just before New Year's Day, I think it was the last time they played together, up until the, up until just recently. They seem to be the glue that holds us together, Reedy, a little bit. Apart from the defence, because I didn't know this stat until yesterday, that back four has played together 11 times and we've won 10. Mm. Well, Phil... Uh, Phil seems to make a huge difference in my mind. I think Phil told me a stat before we left to go to the game and he said that I think the 15, 15 games out of 16, when they both played, we've won all of them. So, it just show you, but I will admit, and this is just me, I probably will get slight slate for this, but I don't think indeed he had the best of games yesterday. Um, again, maybe because he was a bit leggy, I don't know, um, but he just he didn't seem... Pace. It, it was, 
it was blowing a bit, but I think that might have been as you put a lot of hard work in yesterday. A lot of I think it was, I think it was because Fatu Fatu did try and make that ball a bit too many times, and I think it got a bit repetitive in how we were doing it. So maybe he just got to the point where he was a bit too shattered to make them runs anymore. Um, but like I say, on majority of the games, yes, both when Wilf and Ricardo were in the team, we have been a lot, lot better. And I think the main one for me is Ricardo Pereira, because even if you don't see too much special from him, it, it's just the quality that shines through. So it, it's just good to see that he's back and hopefully for the next six games, he's back fit fully um, for the rest of the game. So. Yeah, look, so like Reedy says, we've got six games now. It's not just six games, it's more like six cup finals, isn't it? Yeah, man, <laughs> as cliche as it is, um, you know, you can probably afford to... Sorry. <laughs> you, can, you can probably afford to... Obviously, you don't want to, but you can probably afford one loss, I think. Um, you know, whether... Whether that's going to come against Southampton, whether that's going to come against West Brom, I think they're the two toughest games, by the way, West Brom and Southampton. Um, I, it's it's hard, mate. I think um, this is the perfect opportunity now to go on a run. I mean, look, the 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 passion, the the energy from the players, in terms of not what not on the pitch but off the pitch as well, they seem to be. Which it, this is crazy, by the way, because like it, we've only won two games on the bounce, right? And before that, it, we were all like in meltdown, basically, including <laughs> myself. But, including yourself, including myself. But the, but the but the but the players and the managers just seemed like the happiest they've been all mm. year. It's weird. It's crazy. They they. It's because they're like, big it is. It's because they're yeah, big it is. Yeah. And they yeah. they seem on they seem to, you know on top of the world, mate. And and that's crazy. Seeing as though the run we 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 went on, but I mean it was really interesting listening to Dewsbury Hall's interview on uh, the when you're smiling mm -hmm. after the the last game, um, after the Norwich game. Sorry, saying that you know everyone was saying we're bot we're bottlers and no one wants us to go up automatically and all this. And it does seem to have have given. I mean, I remember after the Leeds game again, I was listening to the when you're smiling and. Um, I think Matt Piper said, you know, maybe that Leeds defeat is going to poke the bear. And it didn't do that. It went the opposite way. But now maybe this poor run of form, everyone, including fans, again, including myself, getting on the players' back and the manager's back, maybe that has poked the bear now. And maybe that has kind of injected a bit of um, desire and, you know, whatever into the players to say, all right, let's actually prove them wrong. You know, let, let's yeah. prove that we are the best team in this league. Because, like, there's been so much noise. Mate. I mean, even after when Leeds beat us, I think Rotter um, for Leeds was saying we're the best team in the we're Ooh. we're the best team in the league. And Ampadu came off the pitch and made made a comment about what uh, Enzo had said before the game about you know it's not a big game for us, it's a big game for them. And I think Ampadu was like big game for us and all this. So there's been a lot of noise and I think there's some mind games that have been involved throughout the whole season. But you know it's in our hands now. That is literally it. And I think um you just think back to the the uh the, the 15 16 season mate. We had enough. We we all came together and we got it over the line. And um yeah. I think that's just what we got to do now mate. We just got to get it over the line. Just going back back in the past a little bit further. I mean I'm one of the old schools. I'm a bit dinosaurish, like Phyllis. Tom's not quite my age, but he's a bit old schoolish. I'm 53 and I went absolutely bonkers running around the room celebrating that last minute winner. Well, nearly last minute winner. The, I'm not sure whether the dog was celebrating or he was trying to buy me, so I got him overexcited. But I've got the same feeling of that goal yesterday as when Stevie Howard scored against Leeds in the same goal at the, in the same end. I, it's just that same kind of feeling that. That turned the season around, and I reckon this will turn the season around as well, I think, Tom. Just going back to the point you were saying about the defeats, I think the reaction from the fans of Bristol City away really hit the players, if I'm honest mm. you. I think yes. the way the reaction yeah. from the fans of what the hell for, you know, was that really uh, got to the players. And I think the players were taking back, think, we're third in the league, and we're getting chances from that because we've had a bad game. But I generally think the players probably taken that and gone, we need to step up now. It's our time to put it right. And, yeah, that goal yesterday, the goal against Leeds, Howard, the the, the Claridge goal, the Yuri Tillemans at Wembley, the, those, those magical moments yesterday was up there with that because I think we knew how much, we'd known that Ipswich had lost at 12.30, 
knowing that we go into the game winning, we're back at the top, seeing at half time that Leeds were losing, you know, going into that final 10 minutes, still seeing Leeds losing. The atmosphere, you know, the, the fans were trying to suck the ball into the net. They really were. And then obviously the chance where there was a massive scramble in the goal, you were just sitting there going, it really is not our day today when that no. was not in the back of the net. Yeah. And obviously, Mavadini pops up, and like you, Jamie, you still get that feeling now how much that meant. And you saw it after the game, the, the celebrations, but Winks and stuff. Winks and Ricardo, for me, the two that makes his team tick. And when ha Winks has not got his main man next to him, and it's Hamza Chowdhury, it's a completely different team. When ha when Ricardo Pereira plays, the team is a different animal. And Winks has got his side man with him, he's got his wing man with him, you know, conducting the play, knowing that he can do a little bit more about it. Blocks wants to say that. <laughs> Callum, Give me a good off Callum. Behind him, not the one that he's wearing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the wrong channel if he wants Ricky's wearing. Just, 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 sorry, I just want to say just two things very quickly, Jamie. First thing, when you when you talk about goals as well, it kind of uh, I, I had a feeling of the the Norwich goal in fifteen sixteen, the earthquake goal, where yep. Joe scored eighty yeah, yeah. minute, and and that was massive. Um, and I can't remember. I think it was similar time of the season as well. Also, um. I just wanted to say quickly, when Tom was talking about the players and how the, you know it would have hit them what happened after the Bristol City game, I think earlier in the season when things weren't going... Well, no, we were winning every game, but there were a small section of fans that were you know talking about on how they didn't like the style of play and all of that, um, including one or two on this, on this call, which is more than, <laughs> which is more than reasonable. Um, obviously you had a lot of fans that were just like shut up you know we're winning every game you know whatever and I think when we go on this that poor run of form that we did um, then obviously more fans started to kind of question what Enzo was doing and things like that but the thing is you know, nobody cares. I, I said this with my mate the other day. Nobody cares about the performances if you win. You know, they only care about mm. the performance if you lose. And um, I don't care if we play like shit for the next six games. Yeah. If we win every yeah. game, you know, that, that's all that matters. And it, I think it's not about performance blocks. It's not about performance. It's about results now, isn't it? Well, it's exactly. If we were mid table, let's say we were a mid table Premier League team, right? And I think back to Puel, mate. We were a mid table Premier League team. We weren't, we weren't winning, you know, we weren't challenging for top four that season. And we also really weren't going to get relegated. And I think that's when people will, I think that's why, you know, Puel got sacked because the fans hated it. The fans hated the football and, and you could afford to make a change uh, at that stage. But right now, mate, I mean, you know, it is all about winning games, winning the league or getting promoted. And I think, you know, it it's not really the time now to, as long as you're winning games, you can't really question it. In my, in my opinion, which is oh, why I wouldn't question it earlier on in the season. Yeah, I'm talking of games, uh, Jono, we've got Millwall and Plymouth on the Tuesday and on the Friday. What kind of changes do you think we would make? None. 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 None, really. None. Um, you know, I think Vardy will come in for Dakar. I think Con I think Connor Cody will come in as well. I think there'll be a, ch a few changes here or there and then back to the normal team, on, um, depending on whichever yeah. game it is. I think, yeah, you probably put the better team against Plymouth and then maybe put the likes of Chowdhury in against uh, Millwall and play, play a few players like that. If I agree with what Tom said. Um, you know, when Rick, uh, Ricardo plays with um, Winks, it, the team just plays really well. And, you know, how many times when Vestergaard plays, has he made that run from the middle of the pitch to try and make something happen? Um, you know, I think those three players are vital. I think they must play. Either bring on Cody for fast, I think, will be... A change I'll make, maybe definitely Dakar off of Vardy. But apart from that, no. Even though Mavadidi didn't do anything, he scored the winning goal. You know, yeah, I wouldn't... Hold on, John. McAteer's injured and played Carlos. We might not see him the rest of the season, unfortunately. We might, we might not. Go on, John. But, um, <clears throat> no, definitely change Daki, Daki, Dakar for Vardy. <laughs> but, um, Ma yeah, but um, Mavadidi, even though he had a poor game, as Reedy would say, he, he scored the last-minute winner. How can you... You know, he, he's been on... Our form goal scorer Ravidini. So even though he didn't play well, he's just that big game moment. So I wouldn't make I'll make two changes. I'll bring on Cody for fast and I'll bring on um Vardy for Dakar. That's it. I heard I heard really I heard a good thing Matt Piper said yesterday. Faze is like a right footed Soyunku. 
He yeah. likes diving into the tackles. Yeah, he, he likes being aggressive, doesn't cool, he? Isn't he? Yeah, he's very aggressive. Again, he he does get up the line quite quick, quite quickly. But then when he doesn't make the the right challenge, he has to run back. But I, I, that's that's what I like about him. Obviously, people say that he there is a mistake in him a lot of the time, like like we saw. Um, Hull and stuff like that, but again, for me, when when you've got your best your best lineup out there, for me, he is in there. I'm totally honest because with him and Vestergaard together, majority of the time they don't put a foot wrong. So, and like I say, he's he's a, he's a fast one out of the two to to kind of cover back when when Vestergaard does go up like he did in in the game yesterday. Tom, what are you thinking for Mill? I'll let you go in a minute, Tom. After this, Millwall and the score prediction. I know it's a tough one. Are you, going, are you going, Tom? Not sure yet. 50 50. I made my mind up. But still, tickets available. So I'm tempted because I've got Plymouth on Friday, see. So that's uh, a. You're going Plymouth pack. as well? Yeah, I'm going Plymouth on Friday. You're so. not going Plymouth, are you, Reid? No. Part time supporter. So I've got to make mine up one day. I'm going down the uh, pub, mate. I broke down the season into the sections, and one of the sections was the Easter weekend and how we, you know, including the. the games uh bristol norwich and obviously yesterday against birmingham is how many points if we were to challenge and get back into the top two after some dodgy results and looked at the fixtures from everyone else us to come out with six points is massive for me that was going into the final running uh looking at the way ipswich only just got over the line against blooming southampton uh just got over the line in the game before that I watched the Leeds game against Watford. They were poor. I watched them against Hall. They were poor for me. And they got lucky to win that game really in the end. And then yesterday, obviously, them losing and only taking uh, four points out of the possible nine was massive for us. So, to me, going into this Mill game now, it's given us a little bit of a breathing space, you know, because obviously mm. we'd lost two of these three. We would have been in big, big mess. Uh I don't see them in making that many changes. I think he'll try and keep the team now settled as much as he can going into the final game of the season. Yes, it'll be a quick turnaround, obviously, going in from Tuesday to playing Friday. Plymouth have got the same problem as well, though. They're playing on Tuesday night, so it's not like we've got an unfair advantage. Obviously, the only difference is travel, but I suppose the play players will be flying to uh, London and flying to Plymouth, so it don't make much difference on the travelling for them. Uh, I'm going very positive one. I think we'll actually steamroll at Millwall at the, on Tuesday night and get a 3-0 win. Very positive. 3-0 win. There's a lot of people are going wins as well. Uh, Adam's gone for a 2-0 win. Um, there's a couple have gone 3-1 wins. Um, Tom, we shall let you go. Cheers for joining, pal. Cheers, And uh, enjoy the See rest you of your weekend. See, See you later, mate. Be See good. Thanks for joining. See you later, pal. Locks, before I let you go, your Millwall... Predictions and the teams and that. What do you think? Uh, she's again. Oh, mate, it depends on Mr. Positivity has changed completely. <laughs> it depends on. Um, it depends on what Leicester turn up. Um, if uh, if we turn up properly, mate, like, like we should, then uh, yeah, I'd probably agree with Tom three 0 It could be a tough one if not. I don't think we'll lose either way, but I think you know a draw could could happen, which wouldn't be the end of the world as long as you go and beat Plymouth. But um. But yeah, uh, I will say a 3-0 Leicester win like Tom, mate. I think we'll turn up. I think we're going to turn up for all six. I don't think we're going to go unbeaten in six. I'm sorry. I do think we will lose one more game this season. Come on, Mr. 360 here. Christ. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I do think we'll lose one, but I think it will be enough to get top two. So, uh, so yeah. So, 3-0 Leicester Millwall. Just, I just forgot to say... Happy birthday, Christian Fuchs. It's his 38th birthday today. Oh, and also, here's another little known stat. Even Reedy didn't know this. Mickey Adams was appointed boss on this day in 2002. Who? 22 years ago, he was appointed on this day. That makes me. lasted two years. You are? And he lasted two years. Well, I know. He did well, though. He got his back up, though. He got his back 22 up. 22 years ago. How old yeah. was Reedy? Three. He got us back up when we went into administration. Remember that, lads? He did. He did. Did as well that year. Uh, sorry, locks. What were you? What did you say your score prediction would be? Three, two nil. Did you say? Three nil, mate. Yeah, three, three nil. Dak, Dak a hat trick. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. All right, that's the only time you. That's the only time you'll see Reedy really come on the show in the morning. Very happy, mate. Is when Dak scores that trick. <laughs> All right, then, pal. Well, when he beats me on FIFA. Up. <laughs> 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 Cheers, 
Jono, what are you thinking for the weekend? You've been a bit quieter today. You, you don't. Are you two, two one for? Oh, what what, what thing of the weekend has happened? No, for the um, Millwall Tuesday. game. We're on, the, we're on the Millwall game now, pal. I think two one to Leicester. I think we'll win. Just against Millwall. Um, just got to keep plugging, plugging. What uh, the, the the funniest thing I've heard this season is how Locks could be the most positive person on the planet. Literally every every day saying we're going to break the points record, not just beat it, absolutely annihilate it. To being one of the most depressed people in the world. <laughs> it's one of the most biggest changes. But um, I think we'll beat Millwall two one. Righty, I Millwall two one. All right, John, we shall see. <laughs> Jono said two months ago, the season's finished. Don't come for me, mate. Don't come for me. <laughs> I, look, I've always been negative. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah that is, that's true, yeah. Jono thinks, I'm not saying this. Jono thinks negative, and if anything positive happens, he's over the moon. It's double celebration for him. That, if you're always negative, then when you do something good, it feels the best ever. Yeah. Right, exactly, Jono. Jono. Yes, exactly, I'm Jono. Like I'm a bit yeah. like that. All right, Jono, speak to you soon, pal. Be good. Later. Later. Reedy. What are you going for? One nil. You're going for a boring one nil win here. One nil. Mark Watson's going for a five nil win. That's been rather too proactive, pal. That's a little bit too proactive for you. Um, there is hey, it's thing. still a win. It's still a win. Who cares? There is one thing. Before we go, I've got to show everyone this because this happened. This has happened for donkeys and donkeys years. Reedy really wasn't sure what was going on when it was all happening. He's not really heard about it. But going under the underpass. It's absolutely, just watch this, it's brilliant. That's brilliant. I really do. And that's been going on. I don't know how many years that's been going on, but it's absolutely fantastic, that is. Absolutely brilliant. I love it. Going through that tunnel, going through the underpass, it's brilliant. It's part, it's tradition. Whenever Leicester win, it's tradition, really. Yeah, we, well, we, we've done it every time we've been down there, if it's, um, if it's, if we, if we've won anyway, so. Alan, you, you should be able to answer this for me. How long has that been going on? Because, Alan Misham, for he's been around for a long time, and I've known it. I've known him a while. You should be able to tell me how long has that been going on under that underpass? It was happening when I was first started in the late seventies, early eighties. I was going to say so more like fifties, isn't it, mate? You are. I was going to say more like fifties, isn't it? No, it's forty. Early eighties is only forty years to me. Alan, you must know. You must know how long that's been going on. It must have happened. Um. Underpass horn, oh, the little thing, yes. Little things please little minds, that's what they say, isn't it? But, yeah, when you see Alan on on Tuesday, you'll be on the same bus as him on Tuesday, won't you? Mm -hmm. Ask him that question, see if he knows. I will uh, Jonathan, no, I've, unfortunately not, because the bar opens tomorrow, as if you didn't know. Everyone will know the bar opens. He's a part-time fan, that's why. Part I'm not a part-time fan, I'm, working, I'm a working legend, me, an Alcudia legend. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a little like or subscribe. and much appreciated. It doesn't cost you anything. Just hit that button. If you're watching on Facebook, give us a like. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. Absolutely fan dabby doozy. Reedy, what did you say? One nil. One nil. Oh, Alan, you don't go over. You don't go that way. Where is it? He doesn't go that way, unfortunately. Oh, that's a shame. You ought to. So in all the years, you've never gone that way, Alan. You ought to try it once. Only when we win, though. Only happens when we win. Don't go down it when we lose. Um, yes, I hope it will be. Right then, Reedy, we shall see you through the week. Yep, no worries, mate. See you through the week, I'll see you through the window, pal. And through the keyhole. That doesn't quite... That's a bit... That's worse than looking oh, at you. Oh, do one. There right you go. Then, pal, we shall... See you later, pal. Be good. See you in a bit. See you later. There we go. Thank you for watching the show. It's been much, much appreciated as normal. Um, I'll be back next week. Yes, we're open, but we're only open six days a week, so I'll still do the famous Foxes after my show because I couldn't leave you with Reedy for four weeks, could I? That would be that would be terrible for you, like, wouldn't it? But next week, 10 o'clock, I'll be back. So it's ciao, ciao, adios, goodbye, arrivederci.
There goes the final whistle. Come on, you foxes. Thanks for watching Leicester Fan TV. Thanks to our sponsors, Everards, Bolo Blinds, Pucker Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Distillers Direct, Hologram, Take Me, Nubian Cow, The Fox's Arms and Rainbows. Run by the fans, for the fans. Follow us on socials at Leicester Fan TV and visit LeicesterFanTV.com for all the latest news, views and videos.